Dear Heavenly Father, you are full of signs and wonders and mysteries beyond imagination. But is it your stuff that we seek for our own selves? Or is it knowing you more, knowing your ways, so that you just not live in us? but that we would abide in you and you in us and you in us would touch the lives of others the way that you've had mercy and compassion on us and in our helpless state came to save us from ourselves and our sin and all that the enemy would do to us because we are precious in your sight every single one of us so Lord let your light so shine in my life that your words would touch the lives of other people. In Jesus' name I pray and ask these things. Amen. Okay, so the Lord wanted me to share. And everything that I would ask him about, he said no. So as I was pondering all of that, he reminded me of the torment that I went through and before soul healing before I had been introduced to um, Katie Souza Ministries <clears throat> I had never heard the verse that talked about in John about being prosperous and being in health even as our soul prospers um, and I never had an understanding of that so as I started into soul healing, prior to that, I was in a situation that would be impossible for me to be able to work through in God's way. And I was not happy about it. But I just kept praying and reading the Word every day, at least five minutes that was a um, vow I made through another seminar that had to be broken. <laughs> but God still used it to his an advantage because his word never returns void. So what happened is after five years, and I did keep a journal, and reflecting back on that um, journal, I saw that his word, as impossible and as dry and as just my whole attitude God still used his word to wash me little by little by little and then when I was given um, the link to healing the wounded soul um, God knew that I was ready to hang on for a journey like no other in my life so this morning I have been watching, they have a lot of miracles breaking out, a lot of seminars, a lot of really positive things, and people are getting healed, and you can feel the power of the Holy Spirit, and as I was pondering all this, God asked me this question. He said, do you want the miracles for you? 
Are people seeking me for the miracles for themselves? Or because they want that intimacy with me? Do they just want my stuff? And as I was talking to the Lord, I said, well, I know in the past I have been very guilty of that. Let me give you a for instance. Um, my husband and I are very wounded people, okay? Um, but for our own perspective, the other person is always the problem. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Um, we never look at a problem and somebody's irritating us and we say, oh, I'm definitely the problem. Well, as God showed me, I was the problem because <laughs> it was my soul that was messed up and my junk got stirred up by his junk. And we just, our junk was fighting against each other and we didn't know that because we don't see in the supernatural, we see people. So when you see an angry or harsh look on your spouse's face, then, you're, then you see that look and we don't recognize it as demonic, and then our junk is going to give them the same look back. And we just keep swapping junk. Well, with that being said, um, I was working on soul healing for myself. And God would give me a breakthrough, and I'd be in this great place of peace. See, in soul healing and in intimacy with the Lord, we enter into his rest. We enter into that peace that passes all understanding. And I would come out of my prayer closet and I was like, oh, this is so wonderful. I could live like this forever. In fact, how about if I just don't come out of the closet? Good concept, but very impractical. <laughs> That's not why we're here. But anyway, I would come out and of course Satan is observing all this. I have literally seen him. Um, and his demons are, they're all at work and they're like, oh no. So then something new would get stirred up in my husband and out of the blue, some ridiculous thing would be brought up and here I am in this place of peace and everything's great. And I walk in and his junk's up. Well, you know how to know if your junk is the same as his, is if his junk is up and you get irritated. So a little light went on. I thought, well, um, because I learned about it, interceding for others and I never really knew how that worked. You know, we prayed for others. Have you ever heard this prayer? God, as they go on their journey, we ask that you go with them. Is there a lot of power in that prayer? Does Jesus not say in his word that I will never leave you nor forsake you? So when we pray a prayer that's already there, there's no power in that prayer. But we can pray the same type of prayer where we say, Lord, send your angels to keep them safe and protect them from all harm. So I even learned about ineffectual prayers and effectual prayers and how they, they affect us. So as I was going through that, um, I started interceding on behalf of my husband. And I was seeing breakthrough. But what, the, what God showed me, and he asked me this question, he said, are you praying for your husband's breakthrough for yourself? Because it will make your life better or feel better or are you praying for your husband because you want him to know me the way you're seeking me and to seeking to know me guilty because i kept wanting to revert back to the fact that that if my husband would just change and make better decisions now it is true, um, we are affected by the choices and decisions of others. However, God did say that
that if we keep our focus on him, that we can rise above the storm and walk on water. Because he asked Peter, come to me on a very, very tumultuous, crazy storm out in the middle of the sea, which you would never get me to do in a million years. These people that do these reality hunting for tuna and getting the prize, yeah, they can have all that. Um, just a day in my life, that's all the storm I need. So when I had this conversation with the Lord, it was like Satan will go before God. He's a great accuser, but we are covered by Jesus, and he's our intercessor. He's our defense attorney. Um, but he can still, because he's sitting and watching and studying, him and all his kind, and he can still go, go before God, because it's what she did with Job. They're not interested in you. They just want your stuff. And I had to confess I was guilty. My motive wasn't pure. So I had to repent of that and just turn my focus back on the Lord because in Him and all that He is, like the best friend in the whole wide world, the best father, the best everything, is the light of life. In Him is the peace that passes understanding. In Him are we freed from jealousy and envy and greed. Have you ever saw blessings on other people and say, God, why don't I get them? What are we looking at? We're looking at the appearance of their blessings. We're not looking at the Lord. And that's why there's strife and envy and jealousy among us. God knows. And he wants to bless us. But true blessings come from just knowing him. Spending time with him. Are we wanting to get home from work and relax and watch TV? As our place to unwind or is one of our favorite places just time with the Lord going in our prayer closet and just wanting to share our hearts with him and let him share his heart with us because he will <clears throat> so with that being said freedom <clears throat> true freedom is in all that he is as that intimate place in us and us in him. And there's nothing like it in the world. There's a hymn that says, take the world, but give me Jesus. It's really true. Hope you have a blessed day. Bye.